love coming to the house of the Lord. I love the presence of the Lord. And before we go on, I know I'm going to be watchful of time right now, but uh, when we were singing that first song, Stephen, I don't know how possible it is to get those lyrics up there about him coming like a flood. Uh, I know when I ask to go back and forth from the PowerPoint, it, it kind of tends to be difficult, yes. Uh, when we were praising him, I saw somebody standing on the edge of an ocean, but they were not in the water, and there was no water for some distance. Um, and they were singing in faith that song. And I just want to speak to you that when you're singing these songs, you're prophesying that his love is going to come. When you sing like a flood, like a flood, we, we receive your love when you come. That means I'm going to stand here until you come. I'm going to praise you. I'm going to dig in. I'm going to get in the word until you come. And I don't know who that belongs to tonight, but I felt it so it resonate in my spirit, just this picture of somebody standing in the sand, wishing for that surf, wishing for him to come like a flood but it hasn't been there in a while and I just want to urge you don't go back to the house don't go back to your past hang in there hang in there and believe and praise and prophesy over yourself sing the Psalms because it's coming his love is coming and right after that Aaron I thought about our trip to fine arts lots of memories but it had uh, the one place that was so frustrating for me was the um, ocean which one with the Daytona Beach that was a very frustrating beach for me, and I want to talk to you about that as well. Um, because when we were singing that, like a flood, like a flood, we receive your love when you come, I saw too, like it was almost a message that he was giving me. It was like somebody standing there in faith with no water in sight. And then there was one where they just st stood where it was comfortable for them, where it was just a little surf. And I remember our trip to Daytona, it was very frustrating because we would stand barely in ankle deep, and the waves were so brutal that day I couldn't stand up. It knocked me down every time. And I don't know if you've had that experience, but it's very frustrating. And I was like, I will stand. And so I would like get this position and I'd be like, you're not going to knock me down. You're not going to be knock me down. And those waves, Aaron, I don't know if you remember that, right? Or you're nodding. The surf was so, that ankle deep water knocked me down every time the surf came in. Guys, when we're praying, we receive your love when you come. <laughs> Sometimes I'm telling you what he wants to bring in your life is something that's going to bowl you over. And I just, I just want to say, can we stop fighting him? Can we stop like standing in dry places, praying for him to come? And then when he does fight him on it, do you know what I mean? Or say, God, this is too much. This is too much. I just like getting my toes wet. God, whatever you have, do you know what that says? We receive it. Whatever you want to bring my way, Lord, I receive your love. Whatever that looks like, Lord, I receive it. I receive it in dry places. I receive it when I'm just getting my toes wet and I'm so hungry and I'm thirsty for more. And Lord, I receive it when I can't even stand up under it. I don't know about you and I don't know where you are, but I don't believe for, <laughs> I just don't believe anything that is led, that he wants to speak to us in all of it. And it, I don't know who needs that right now. Maybe it's me, but keep praising, keep standing, trust him in whatever season you're in. Amen. Yeah, I love, I love when he gives us a word. I love, I just, oh my goodness, I love worshiping him with you. Stephen, I know it's no small feat, but if we could go over to the message. Guys, so we are in Luke 4. Remember, we spent a month in Luke 8, and it's really interesting. I, I try, some of you guys know my Bible study and devotion is I try to get through the books. It's hard to get through the Gospels because there's so many nuggets. It's kind of like Proverbs. I don't believe in just dry reading something through. So I want to understand it, and I want to reason with it and prayer, prayerfully read the text. So it's taken me some time to get through the Gospels, and I've read Matthew and Mark, and I'm in Luke, and I was reading this, and and. The message, the, the verse, the passage that he has for us tonight on Monday morning, it just went bam. So we're, we're going to be talking about searching for purpose tonight, the search for purpose. And I don't know how many of you are in here tonight, and you would say, honestly, Lord, I'm, I'm looking for the purpose that you have for me in this season. I'm looking for a purpose. I'm not sure what that purpose is. I can remember back so many times in my life, spiritually speaking, that I would say, God, what purpose do you have for me? Why am I here? 
right now for such a time as this, as the book of Esther says, what do you have for me? And I just, I just want to say something, guys. I don't think it's by accident that he birthed this on Monday, and we just watched a, a number of young men come up here and older men who are discipling the younger men, watching these kids as they're going through Bible study. Did you hear that, the Old Testament they're going through? And then they're going through the New Testament in, in their regiment, what they're doing. I mean, that is super powerful. And as they're growing and as they're being mentored and as they're being discipled, how many of you know they're determining and they're seeking God's purpose and will for their life. I think sometimes in adulthood we forget to seek for his purpose or his will in our lives. Sometimes we lose sight and lose touch with the purpose he's already given us. That's the message for tonight. In August, he, he birthed in us this series of activation. Um, and so last month in July, we talked about freedom. And this month, we're talking about being activated in Christ. That means uh, taking action. Last week, we were in Luke 9, 1 through 6. Uh, Luke 9 and 43, I believe, in that one chapter. Remember, we talked about sent out together. And then we talked about uh, being sent. And, and he, Jesus said, if you are going to follow me, what do you have to do? Deny yourself take up your cross every once in a while daily and follow me and I was thinking about that message last week and I was watching these men who were leading and discipling these younger men to be these young men and I thought okay there they are how cool was that that they all stood there in unity with all these accomplishments to read off was anybody else impressed by that or was it just me it's impressive but I guarantee you each one of those men had their own struggles every week to get there, to make it, to invest. How much of me am I going to invest in these young men tonight? Am I going to give it 35%? Am I going to give it 60% tonight? See, they have a purpose. They see their purpose, and it's clear. And I'm telling you, it's really great when everybody stands up here and applauds for you. But it's another thing when you're tired on a Wednesday night. And it's another thing when you need to study your lesson. And it's another thing that you're leading. Does everybody understand what I'm saying? They have to make decisions all along the way. What Jesus says later in, in chapter 9 where he says, you've got to deny yourself and pick up that cross when you don't feel like it and follow me. And so there, there, right there, I was thinking, God, you're so awesome. Because in everything we do, I wrote this down, um, and she received accolades tonight. She does a lot of things behind the scenes. But when Brother Jeff said she had sewn 302 badges... That's a lot of badges. My hands cramp up thinking about sewing that many. My hands cramp up thinking about three badges. Does anybody, can I get a witness, ladies? Anybody know what I'm talking about? Three badges, my hand starts cramping up. See, we're talking about purpose tonight. We're talking about vision. We're talking about renewal of vision. We're talking about renewal of purpose. Do you understand that what she did was so they didn't stand up there with a blank canvas? That every child could have what they had earned. Did you hear Brother John say, we're not giving this to you. You earned it. And did you see their faces as they stood there with pride on their faces? Because they knew they did what it took to accomplish it. And a woman of God in this season found her purpose in sewing 302 badges on. So they didn't have a black, blank canvas. I'm talking about what's your purpose in this season. What is he calling you to in this season? Miss Brenda, I know for a fact you taught Salmi. She was a girls' ministry director for a long time and stepped down. And she, here's the thing, stepped down to do another thing. Now she blesses girls. I don't even know how many girls' ministries. I don't know if you know this or not. But she has made more than one or two or three dresses for those little girls in girls' ministry. Rhonda is nodding right now from scratch because they couldn't afford a dress or they couldn't find a dress that fit them. I'm telling you right now, what's your purpose? She is literally sitting almost on the very back row. Nobody marches her up here very often to say, wow. But Miss Brenda, God did tonight. And Brother Jim, she can do what she does because you support her and you celebrate her. Does anybody understand what we're talking about right here? We're talking about finding purpose and supporting one another in purpose. What has he called you to do in this season? There's just some powerful stuff here. So we're talking about, this is a question I think a lot of children of God come up to. I have many times, Lord, what is my purpose? And I would add, what is my purpose in this season? Stephen, if we can go to that next slide. 
And I'm going to do my best. So it's a passage. It's not a core verse. It's a passage. If we can go to Luke 4, 42 through 44, I am in the NIV version. Please feel free to read that in whatever version you have with you and what version you prefer. But when I was reading and I go through and make sure everything's underlined in my Bible before I go on to my next Bible, and I have an NLT waiting on me, friends, so I'm trying to get, get through my Bible study to get through so I can get there. So this was one of the portions that I underlined this week in my devotions. At daybreak, Jesus went out to a solitary place. The people were looking for him, and when they came to where he was, they tried to keep him from leaving them. But he said, I must proclaim the good news of the kingdom of God to the other towns also, because that is why I was sent. And he kept on preaching in the synagogues of Judea. If you'll look at this with me, what what the Lord had us highlight, because that is why I was sent. And I'm just going to give you just a preview, because I know a lot of us are tired on a Wednesday night, and I don't want you to miss the heart of God, what he downloaded in me. Is it is essential that every once in a while that we remember what our purpose is. It's essential every once in a while that we have a standard of why we have been sent. What this is all about. Why? Because it's easy to get off track. And it's easy even in godly things to get off track. Do you see the fan club? The fan club wants him to stick around. Can you just do some more for us? Can you stick around here and perform some miracles? But Jesus has a clarity about what he has been sent to do and what he must do. We, too, must have a clarity. Wherever that comes from, there will be distractions. That's part of the message. We're just going to say it because I just believe he wants us to. There will be things that come our way, even well-meaning people, even well-meaning things that try to get us off course. I, I, just for example, because we mentioned her, if, what if Miss Brenda would have said, you know what, I need to go do something else. I, need to, I, I have a show I need to catch up on. I just don't have time to do 302 badges. Do you guys hear what I'm saying? Like distractions, things that get us off of our course and off of our purpose. That's what we're talking about. Do we know why we're sent? And I believe with all of my heart, every once in a while, we have to say, God, help me to have crystal clear vision about what I'm doing right now, what my purpose is right now, my purpose. And I want to say this to everybody in here, because sometimes we come into a church house and we think that the Spirit of the Lord is talking to 10 people. I really believe that. I've been there. I've been there. Where, God, you're talking to everybody else but me. You're not really talking. It's everybody in here. He has a purpose for you. A rock star purpose. Somebody write that down. Rock star purpose for you. What is that purpose in this season? Well, let me tell you what to do. We're going to talk about that, but get before the Lord. I'm going to go ahead and go. He's, he's just, man, he's rolling this in my spirit. Stephen, if we can go to that first point. I have three points, and I knew we'd have kind of a shorter service tonight, but I'm going to do my best to relay to you what he, the Spirit of the Lord has spoken to me to say. And the first thing is, is that we have to discover our purpose. So the first point tonight is discovering my purpose, not Aaron's purpose. You know, it's really easy to look at Aaron. Aaron, I have done this for years. And spoken into your life because it's so obvious that God has great things in store for you. Did anybody yes? I mean, yes, it's really obvious. It's easy sometimes, especially if you're an encourager, there's a habit we get into of encouraging everybody else. <laughs> and saying, Pastor man, this I see you doing this, I see you doing this. And forget to think, what is mine? Do you guys hear me? Like it's easy to look at, oh well, Dana, she's doing children's Dana's sure. Dana's discovering her birth. What about you? So we need to stop and say, what is my purpose? I need to discover what my purpose is in him. And I'm going to tell you what the word says. We have to make time for greatness. Let me give you, I I know I just have a few minutes. One thing we tend to do is go find books and self-help. Google 10 ways to greatness, 10 ways to discovering my purpose. That's not what Jesus does. Next slide, Stephen. I'm going to show you how we go off rail so many times. He's, it says at daybreak, Jesus went out to a solitary place. What was he doing there, just spinning around in circles? No, he was talking to the Lord. This is how we stay in tune with our purpose. It's not by reading top 10 books. It's not by Googling. It's not by getting an update by Reverend so-and-so every morning on the email. It's by getting alone with the Lord and saying, what is my purpose today? I surrender to you whatever you have for me. Help me to have crystal, crystal clear focus on what you would have for me today. It says, at daybreak, Jesus went out to a solitary place. Okay, 
Jesus, the Son of God, went out to a solid. If he had to go to a solitary place, how much more so would we need to, at the beginning of our day, begin our day by getting in a solitary place and saying, Lord, remind me of my purpose. I, utilizing my resources. When I read this part, it was like my resource of time. I've wasted a lot of time. I still waste a lot of time. Does anybody, can I get a witness? I really, if you look at my week, I waste a lot of time. There's time that's just been wasted. But am I fine? Hey, listen, you are... This is not going to happen. You're not going to wake up one day and go, you know, I've got a couple of hours. I think I'm going to get my Bible out and sink into the Word of God. Hallelujah. No, you have to make time. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You have to make time for the Word of God. you got to make time for Him. When it's a making time for greatness, He's the one that can impart to us our, our, what we're supposed to do. Nobody else. I mean, yes, there are people. Aaron, I wish you the best. You know I do. I always have. You and Katrina both, and the family, your entire family, Bryce, I wish you the best. But listen, God is the one that makes it happen. Let us not forget that in our lives, we can sit around and tell each other, you know, skittles and rainbows and really see things. Honestly, have prophetic words for people. He's the only one that makes it happen. Do you understand? Like he's the one, he is the source. And so our, utilizing my resources, I'm going to see where in my day I can make time to be alone with the Lord, where I can get in a solitary place where there's not, yeah, la, la, la. I remember Jess, Jess watches us online. She's in Texas now. But I remember her saying, she was crying out to God, God, I, she has six kids, everybody. And she said, God, when can I get alone with you? I can't, I can't even hear myself think. Anybody there ever, ever in your house? In your, it's just crazy. Stephen just raised his hand. God love him. Anyway, I can't get alone. Do you remember when Jess told us? I mean, it wasn't too long ago. She said, God started waking her up at 2.30 in the morning. So she could have solitary time. So she could have quiet time with him. We've got to have, we've got to guard it as well. But the, Psalm 57 and 2 says in the NLT, I cry out to God. Some of us are crying out to other people. Some of us are crying out to Facebook. Some of us are crying out to every other thing except to God, the source, our source. I cry out to God most high, to God who will fulfill his purpose for me. Somebody needed that tonight. I don't know who. But the Lord downloaded that when he was telling me the scripture. It was like, I cry out to God most high, to God who will fulfill his purpose for me. And that spending that moment in the morning with him. Stephen, if we can go to the second point tonight that he put in my spirit, guarding my purpose. Keeping an eye out for diversions. I'm talking about bad diversions, and I'm talking about good diversions. And Christina, you know, I always talk to you about the bad diversion when I was fasting for my mates. I'm going to say this again. Some of you have heard me say it 10 times. I'm going to say it again. When I was fasting for, my, for Stephen, my husband, when I was fasting for him, I fasted for a year and a half off of TV. Um, I fasted for a year and a half off of meat, by the way. I was a demi-veg for a year and a half. I started fasting things because it's so serious. What is your purpose for me, Lord? I'm tired of messing around. That's the nice way of saying it. Two months before I found Stephen, in my office came the distraction and the diversion, which would have pre-fast thrown me off my course and messed up my destiny again, pushed my destiny back because I'd have something in my hand and I couldn't be released to meet him when God had determined and destined for me to meet him. Because sometimes we're, the, he'll, he'll, the enemy will come up with distractions. And then sometimes like this, we have people in our ear saying, why don't you stay here? I know you feel called, Jesus, to go all over and tell. I know you feel called. Why don't you stay here and work for us? So we have people with probably good intention. Well, Jesus even rebuked Peter. Do you remember when he told him he was going to die? And Peter's like, no. And he, he makes a little, Lord, by God, no. And, and, Peter, and the Lord is like, Peter, get behind me, Satan. You have no idea what my purpose is. If I don't go to the cross, you don't understand all the people that are affected by this. Do you not understand by now that I've got to go to the cross? I've got, I've got to be crucified so that everybody coming after, so that you and me, I have to go to the cross so we can be saved, so there's a blood sacrifice for us. But Peter's like you and me. We're like, no, 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 selfishly, no, 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 Lord. No, don't say that. Don't say that. Jesus rebuked him. Sometimes it's good people. Sometimes it's good intentions. That's why we got to keep an eye out for diversions, distraction. we got to guard our purpose. I've, I'm going somewhere with this. I've got to hurry. Stephen, that next slide, we have to have singular focus. He reminded me of Philippians 3, 13 through 14. 
And it says, one thing I do, forgetting what's behind. You don't have time for that business that you left behind when you got saved. You don't have time for it. You don't. Um, and straining forward, uh, toward, or straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. That's what you're, that's what you're pressing toward. And, and that's what you're leaning toward. And yes, and yes, there are, there are things we don't know everything, but we know that. And anything that gets us off of that purpose is not, I mean, we don't need to go there. Anything that stalls us, anything that thwarts that, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. And the verse 42 says, when they came to where he was, they tried to keep him from leaving them. The next one, Stephen, and the third one, and I'm, I'm, here's where the Lord really went, assessing my purpose, knowing my purpose and sticking to it. I've had the benefit in the last year and a half of sitting under the teaching of a, of a, um, of a teacher. He's a teacher that I listen to, and I'm learning from him. He's like uh, been a seminary teacher for years and years, and he's retired. Do you know what he's talking about, that I needed a big kick in the pants over? Do you realize that your purpose is, is uh, in your household? Sometimes we're saying, God, what's my purpose? It's your spouse. God, what's my purpose? It's your kids. It's been a big, Pastor, it's been a big reminder and kick in the pants. Sometimes we get so bent up on, oh, I'm helping. All of these people here, everybody without fail goes home to a spouse and kids. That, we cannot forget that that is our calling. Just like a pastoral calling, Pastor, is to our family. That's why Mother Teresa said that, that world peace starts at home. If you want peace in communities, you want peace in your nation, we got to have peace in the home. And so uh, we ask, oh, God, what's my purpose? Well, look around, open your eyes. They're right there. Sometimes we abdicate to other people. Well, John and Jeff and all them, they'll teach him. That is, do you, do you guys understand? This is like amazing program, the girls' ministry, amazing program. But that shouldn't be the only thing they're going through. That shouldn't be the only Bible that they're, they're um, open to, that they hear. Yes? Well, I'm, can I? That shouldn't be the only godly male leadership that they see. Pastor, how many men were up there? Six? Men of God. They're counting on you. Can I tell you something else, men of God? The girls are counting on you, too. Our calling is to teach them how to stay married. Our calling is to teach them not to jump into stuff too soon. Our calling is to teach them how to get through difficulties. Does anybody hear what I'm saying? Sometimes we're like, God, what's my purpose? Open your eyes. Ashley Braden, good Lord, weighted down with all that stuff. Honey, do you know what that tells me? There's an emphasis on what's right. He turns around, it's full of badges. I remember, and it reminds me, Ashley, of Stephen when he, when he was divorced with the two girls. I know this is going out, I'm going to say it. He made sure that he had custody on Wednesday night so they could go to church. Ashley, he's not sitting next to you. But you are bringing him so he gets invested in. So this stuff, and he has the leadership of these men and the word of God. And it's, look at him. Look at already what we're seeing. And it's a sacrifice, girl. Anybody hearing what I'm talking? It's a sacrifice. Anybody hearing this right now in the heart of God? Open your eyes. There's your purpose. Let's get that right. Let's get that right, and then let's move on. God, how can I help other people's kids? Yes. Knowing my purpose is one thing. Sticking to it is quite the, the other. And then let's go to the last slide, Stephen. I'm hurrying, everybody. It's 21. What and where I've been sent today. Whatever you do, Colossians 3 says, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters. Ecclesiastes 9 and 10 says, whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might. 
And here's what Jesus said in 43, 44. He said, I must proclaim. And he kept on preaching. What must you do? Fight for your marriage. Pray for your marriage. Be a good partner in your marriage. Fight for your kids. Pray for your kids. Anybody? Be a good parent to your children. And it just goes out from there. Is anybody, feel, is anybody hearing him? Lord, speak to us. Lord, speak to us. Give us a revelation about what we're already supposed to be doing. Like the call on our life to our spouse. The call on our life, the heavenly call on our life to our children. And then, Lord, what appointments that we have in church. God, help us understand we're not working for men. We're working to you. God, give us a, a wake us up to pray for the kids that we, we tend for the, and the other adults we tend to. The other people we greet, meet. God, convict us where we need conviction. Compel us where we need to be compelled. Encourage us, Lord, and empower us to go forward. In Jesus' precious name. And I, I know it's late. If you need prayer, we're going to turn uh, music on back there. Addie or whoever's going to do that. And Aaron or uh, whatever you guys want to do. Just have some time for altar. Have some time for prayer. You know, a lot of times I, I, I get your notes out in your phone. Write some stuff down that you want to do. Stephen urged us on Sunday night to spend 15 minutes a day. Invest 15 minutes a day talking to the Lord getting before him. Pastor reminded us on Sunday morning of the last days. We're living in the last days. We can't afford to, I don't know about you guys, I'm not even sure we're capable of skating through anymore. We need to pray. We need to make investments. We need to fight for our, our household. We need to pray, God, my purpose right now, help me clear my eyes. Help me to see again. Jesus' precious name, Lord. Stir within us, God. If you're here and you need prayer, we will pray for you. And if you're uncomfortable with people gathering around you, don't hesitate to reach out, text somebody, PM somebody, because there's power in prayer. Amen? God bless you guys. We love you so much.